there was a scene in dream girls where i was get, getting ready to shoot some drugs and the guy says don't do it and i gave the dude a look and uh, all they wrote about was uh, when he gave him that look you know that that was his not to say did you see a nutty professor where i was the whole table <laughs> it's like it's that was so much harder than that look it's such an honor to talk to you guys i've been writing questions for a long, long time for this i'm really looking forward to talking to you guys and eddie i have to show you this i still have my original 1996 Nutty Professor ticket stub when I was 12 years old. Oh, now that is something. First movie that made me cry laughing, but it also taught me how important drama was to comedy um, and, and the idea of grounded drama. Um, I want to ask each of you, 33 years ago, you make Coming to America and the barbershop sequences are genuinely iconic. And obviously you have them back in the sequel. And I want to ask each of you, do you have a specific memory that comes to mind when you think of filming those scenes in, in 88 when, in those particular movies? And was there anything technically different about doing those scenes now to then? Because Rick Baker's effects in the in 88 were brilliant. I wanted to ask you about a memory that comes to mind. Yeah, uh, I, I don't remember anything specific. Uh, when you're doing those makeups, it's kind of like it's a six hour uh, job to put it on. And then you can only do, if you're in a scene where you're playing three or four different people, two or three people in a scene, you can only play one scene a day. So it's really like you're doing like, making like a jigsaw puzzle. So it's kind of like, uh, it's, you don't have, it kind of turned, the whole process turns into a blur. And then you're actually shocked when you see it all together. It's like, that's, that, how did, that's, what, that's how you did it? And, and oddly enough, uh, the, the way it's put together, it didn't, even though the, the, the technology is advanced, the, it still has to be put together like a jigsaw puzzle. And we have to shoot it one at a time and you're looking at a ball and still put together the same way. I actually do have a memory of the barbershop scene the first time around and the second time around. As an actor, you make choices and you're locked into those choices once the director calls action. I made the choice that this guy was gonna eat all the time because he can't cut hair and nobody wants him you know, with, with clippers behind them. So there's a point after you've been shooting where your food is not hot and delicious anymore. It smells like a plate of garbage. It smells like stuff that's been in the trash can because it's eight hours. And so after a while, you're like, you're sitting there, what you want to say, this food stinks like a motherfucker. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's what I was locked into. And this time I had forgotten that. So halfway through the day, I'm sitting there and I'm like, the collard greens smell like garbage. I can't you know, do I remember this moment. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's yes. amazing. Oh I, oh, I forgot about this. This is garbage <laughs> that I'd have to keep pretending to eat. Uh, Eddie, uh, it was actually an honor just speaking with your daughter just now. And one of the cool things about that was learning that she ran lines with you at home to practice for her audition for the movie that she's starring in with her own dad. And I wanted to know what that meant for you to run lines with your daughter. And also the idea of this movie being such a family film and what it means to have your daughter in the movie. Well, I, I was important that we ran lines and that she got the movie herself. Like I could have just gave her the picture of the movie, but she had to audition with other actresses and she had to get put on tape and she had to be good. And that was all you know, important because she's an actress and she's gonna be an actress, so she has to, be able to do it herself. Now, being the proud papa in that situation was, uh, there are no words for it, to look over and see my beautiful baby girl on the set, you know, and and she's actually, you know, good, you know, it's, there's no words for it, nothing. Yep. This is way, way beyond like seeing your kid in a play at the school. <laughs> like and that, that can make a parent's chest burst. You know, I've been, you know, I got, you know, I've seen all that school play stuff, but when you actually look over and you're at work and you see your, your, your kid is at work with you and they're like contributing, there's nothing. Like your chest can burst open. Hey, Eddie, That's at what point did you know Bella had that gift as an actress? Well, she's been on it. She's been wanting to act for years and she stays on it. It's not, it was, it was never a, a passing fan, fantasy. She was like, she was always ask, asking about it. She wanted to start auditioning for stuff when she was in school and was like, no, finish school before you start acting. And, and she's been acting lessons and she, she was always really, really serious about it. And she'll come and do, you know, a scene, like she'll see it, uh, a scene in a movie and she'll want to do that scene like she would uh, what's the movie with Meg Tilly uh 
Agnes of God. And she came to me mm. one day and was like, oh, I love this movie. Uh, can we do, or do that scene? And she wanted to do the scene from Agnes of God. And she'll come pick this. So it's like, uh, she's been serious about it for years, so. Uh, Eddie, I'll end on this because this is a question I've been wanting to ask you for many, many years. You taught me that through comedy, that drama is so important to the comedy. If you have real grounded characters that you care about, when you watch Nutty Professor, you care about Klump's uh, journey and his, and his love for Mrs. Purdy. And I, and I think like the drama is what makes the comedy funny. And I think over the years, I don't think the like films like Oscars, for example, I don't think they appreciate how brilliant comedy really is. And I wanted to ask you about just the idea of what drama does for you uh, that services your comedy. And why do you feel like the Oscars, for example, aren't as appreciative of what comedy is in the sense of, you know, I think you should have won for Dolomite, for Nutty Professor, for Coming to America. And I just wanted to know what your thoughts were on that. Uh, I think that uh, comedy uh, is, uh, laughter is so accessible. And everybody, everybody kind of knows somebody that's funny. Everybody has like a funny friend that could, you know, or a funny relative that, you know, that's really funny. So I think maybe people don't think that it's as serious a thing. But for me, I always felt that acting is acting and it's just as hard to, to do a scene. You know, like for me, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jim Carrey's performance in The Grinch is is just as hard as Robert De Niro in Raging Bull. It's like it's, yes, it, it takes as much of the actor, and it's and it's and it's as amazing, you know. Uh, you know what comedy for some? What, I've, it seems like if a serious actor does a, a comedy and he's really good, like like uh, you can win like what was the, the woman that won for my cousin Vinny? Uh, oh, Marissa Tomei. Yeah, Tomei. She, like a serious. When a serious actor does something funny, they'll applaud it. And if a comedian does something serious, when I did Dream Girls, they were oh, you're so brilliant. And there was a scene in Dream Girls where I was get, getting ready to shoot some drugs, and the guy says, "Don't do it." And I gave the dude a look, and uh, all they wrote about was uh, when he gave him that look. You know, that that was his. Not they said, "Did you see a Nutty Professor where I was the whole table?" <laughs> it's like that. It's that was so much harder than that look. <laughs> yeah. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you for that answer and honor talking to both of you. Thank you so much for all the laughter you've given us over the years. And Arsenio, you're a phenomenal interview. I used to love your show so much. And I think uh, you both are wonderful. I appreciate your time today. I hope you're both are staying safe. Hey, hey, Kevin, I owe you an apology, Kevin, for asking that question. I forgot I was the actor and not the interviewer today. No, I, I actually thought that was a really cool moment that you got to interview him within the interview. That was awesome. So thank you for that. That actually was a really special <laughs> moment. Did you do that during this interview? He did. I, I was curious about Bella, you know. Ah, and yes, okay, now I remember that happened. Cool. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Have a wonderful day.